Today on the Storm Report, the KG veteran Brent Sapersia will tell all in this week's player profile. Also today, high sticking will be the lesson in this week's rule of the game. Plus, ask the coach and Chris McSorley. Coming up on the Storm Report. The Storm Report, sponsored by Team Chiropractic, official chiropractor of the Toledo Storm. Ranch Steak and Seafood, you'll never go hungry at ranch. Shortway Travel, official transportation of the Storm. And Arnie's at Westgate, Toledo's only sports theater. Hi everyone and welcome to the Storm Report. I'm Jeff Gibbons along with Chris McSorley. Now, coming up this afternoon, the man they call, among other things, the general, sack, and granddad, but always the captain, Brent Sapersia, this week's player profile. Also today, the high sticking call gets its turn in this week's rule of the game. Plus, more questions from you, the viewers, in this week's Ask the Coach. And as always, the top dog, head coach Chris McSurley. But before we get rolling, let's recap this week's action, which saw the storm take on Nashville in a couple of games out of the sports arena. Friday night, the Nashville Knights made an appearance at the sports arena, and right from the get-go, it looked like Toledo was in a groove, as on the power play, Ian Duncan scored at the 431 mark to give the Storm the early advantage. The second period began with the Storm enjoying a two-goal cushion when the medical value plans first star of the game. Ian Duncan, this time shorthanded, blasts one by Olo Sundstrom to give Toledo a 3-0 lead. Not one to be left out of the action, Brent Sapersia was next on the hit list, lighting the red lamp for the tenth time this season, giving Toledo their biggest lead since October, 4 to nothing. Then at the 16:36 mark, the gloves came off and the fists began to fly as four players got the gate, while the two clubs were assessed 104 minutes in penalties. In the final period, Toledo just wouldn't let up as Bruce McDonald and Brent Sapersia each tallied goals to finish the scoring for the Storm. Scott King earned the Budweiser Defensive Player of the Game honors, earning his second shutout of the season as the Storm won it going away 6-0. The rematch Saturday night with the Knights proved to be a mere image of the night before as the Storm struck first, courtesy of a Mark Deasley redirection from Andy Suey and Greg Pahulski. Then just four minutes later, it was Rick Judson who sent it by Tom Cole to make it two-zip Toledo. Before the second period could begin, tempers flared for the second night in a row as Pat Filipuk and Mike Haran hooked up. When the dust settled, each skater received a game misconduct and an early shower. With Toledo leading four to nothing in the second, the medical value plan's first star of the game, Greg Pahulski, found the way past Tom Cole to increase the lead to five. Up next for the storm was newcomer John Johnson, notching his first marker as a pro. By the start of the third, not even a miracle could save the Knights as Toledo continued to pour it on. With the score 6-2, Rick Corvo made the move of the night, going coast to coast and finishing off the play with his fourth goal of the season. A late hat trick by Nashville's Mike DeCaro couldn't keep the storm from smiling as the 10-3 final was the most gold scored by Toledo since opening night. Taking a look at the standings, starting in the West, the Dayton Bombers, a team that cannot be stopped recently. 37 points they won again last night. Erie and Toledo tied for second with 33 points. Birmingham on the move, five wins in a row, now with 30. Nashville slipping a bit down to fifth place with 29 points. Columbus and Louisville tied with 27, and then Knoxville rounding out the West. Heading east, the Hampton Road Admirals still lead the Eastern Division with 37 points. Wheeling still on their tail with 36 points. Raleigh up next with 33, then Richmond, Johnstown, Roanoke, and Greensboro. And now let's see who rose to the top in this week's Play of the Week. Our Play of the Week came in the second period of Friday night's game against Nashville. With the storm killing off another night power play, Toledo put the pressure on deep in the Nashville zone when Pat Pilipuk and Bruce McDonald sent the puck out to Ian Duncan in the circle, who promptly blasts his 20th goal of the season top shelf past Olo Sundstrom, tying the team mark of two shorthanded tallies in one game. Ian Duncan's quick stick 
is our play of the week. Shoot out with Louisville at the Sports Arena, and the ECHL offices will have to, uh, some video for their uh, favorite coach to review this week. But first, the actual game highlights. Rick Corby scores unassisted, putting the Storm up one to nothing. After the Ice Hawks tie it up, it's Alex Roberts' turn. The Storm veteran of the assist from Hicks and, and uh, Stas uh, put Toledo back on top by a two to one count. After Louisville scored a controversial goal, the coach McSorley will go ballistic in just a moment, throwing <laughs> sticks and other objects onto the ice. Where are you, Chris? There you go. Yeah, get him out there. Get, get this one on the ice. He starts to disrobe. <laughs> He's going to take his clothes off there, folks. Look out. Start the music. You better switch to decaf, coach. <laughs> That's a nice coat, don't you? Yeah, get that guy. Yeah, sure. Got in the cold. Storm ends up taking it 7-6. Winning goal. McDonald set up by Toledo Connection Judson and Jablonski. Storm wins it 7-6. Pat Kelly with the tapes in the mail. Detroit Red Go tonight and the long bother anyone. A sellout crowd at the sports arena as the storm pinned Louisville with a 7 to 6 loss in the spirit of the season. Take a look at Barry T Potomsky and Mark Holick exchanging pleasantries at center ice. Paul McDonald watching bang home the rebound here. And a storm led 3 2. Scott King came up with some great saves in net for Toledo. Paul McDonald, by the way, got the game winner at 3 05 of the third period as the storm win by a final of seven to six. Now to Toronto. How to clear the puck as a goaltender in this week's ice tip, and we'll learn about the Storm's involvement with a very special cause, plus highlights from last night's game and much more. Coming up next on the Storm Report. The Storm Report, sponsored by Team Chiropractic, official chiropractor of the Toledo Storm. Ranch Steak and Seafood, you'll never go hungry at ranch. Shortway Travel, official transportation of the Storm. And Arnie's at Westgate, Toledo's only sports theater. Well, hi everyone and welcome to the Storm Report. I'm Jeff Gibbons along with Chris McSorley. This afternoon, we'll see just how a bunch of hockey players can help some very special children. As Mefty Lechman, the coordinator for the Power Play for Kids in conjunction with the Children's Miracle Network, will be in the studio live to talk about the program and the Storm's involvement. Plus, for all of you aspiring goalies, Scott King will explain how to clear the puck from behind your net in this week's Ice Tip. And we'll preview the big road trip starting today for the Storm and, of course, Chris McSorley all coming up. But first, let's see what was happening last night out at the sports arena as the Louisville Ice Hawks were in town. Last night, the Storm and the Ice Hawks tangled in a post-holiday get-together out of the sports arena. In the first period, the Storm scored first as Rick Corvo made it look easy, taking it in and sending it past Mike Greenway for the first score of the game. With the score tied at two, heading into the second, Bruce McDonald on the power play found the way past Mike Greenway to give Toledo the lead once again. But like a bouncing ball, the score would go back and forth all night long as the start of the third brought with it another tie score, this time three apiece. Then just 19 seconds into the final period, the general, Brent Persia broke the tie and gave the Storm their fourth lead of the game. After Louisville tied the score one more time, Mount McSorley began to erupt. At the 744 mark, after receiving a bench minor and then a game misconduct for arguing a call, the top blew off. First the sticks, then the tie, then the jacket, the shirt, and finally the shower. However, that might have just been the spark Toledo needed as they responded to take the lead on a Mark Deasley redirection and then a Greg Pahulski tip-in. But even Mount McSorley couldn't keep the Icehawks down as Mark Hollick tied it up one more time at the 1625 mark. But it appeared that Santa still had one more gift to give and it had Bruce McDonald's name on it. McDonald's score put the final touches on a thrilling 7-6 win. Taking a glance at the standings, with the win, Toledo gained some ground on Dayton. Erie in third, just a point behind the storm. Then Nashville, Birmingham, Columbus, Louisville, and Knoxville. Heading out east, Wheeling leads the league with 40 points. Hampton Roads is next with 37. Then Raleigh, Greensboro, Johnstown, Richmond, and Roanoke. Now let's see who earned our Play of the Week honors. This week's play of the week came in last night's game against Louisville. With the score tied for the sixth time in the game, this time at six apiece, 
Bruce McDonald, the medical value plan's first star of the game, came to the rescue. With barely three minutes left in the game, McDonald got the puck from Judson and Jablonski, and without hesitation, sent it past Mike Greenlay for the game winner, ending an incredible game and sending the storm on the road with a three-game win streak. McDonald's game winner is our play of the week. Coming up today on the Storm Report in a special feature, we'll find out what life's like on the road with the Toledo Storm. Also today, player assistant coach Greg Pahulski will be our special guest, and Bruce McDonald will be live in the studio, all coming up next on the Storm Report. The Storm Report, sponsored by Team Chiropractic, official chiropractor of the Toledo Storm. Ranch Steak and Seafood, you'll never go hungry at ranch. Shortway Travel, official transportation of the Storm. And Arnie's at Westgate, Toledo's only sports theater. Happy New Year, everyone, and welcome to the Storm Report. I'm Jeff Gibbons, along with special guest Greg Pahalski. Well, this afternoon, we'll take you on the road and behind the scenes with the Toledo Storm and attempt to give you a better idea of what it's really like on the long and winding road. Also today, Bruce McDonald will be live in the studio to talk about Toledo's recent turnaround in the standings and also about Bruce's play. And it was one of the most successful road trips this season for the Storm. We'll show you some of the highlights, as well as the guy to my right, Greg Pahalski. But first, let's bring everyone up to date on what happened on last week's Southern Road Swing, which saw Toledo take six out of a possible eight points. The trip began last Sunday in Louisville, and when the final whistle blew, the storm gained a point, but fell in overtime 5-4. to four. Rick Corovo, Mark Hicks, Jeff Jablonski, and Brent Persia all lit the lamp for Toledo, while Kelly Enns got the game winner for the Ice Hawks just two minutes into the overtime session. The following night, the Storm traveled to Birmingham to take on the Bulls. And Monday night would prove to be all Toledo as the Storm skated out with a 4-1 win. John Johnson had a couple of goals to lead the way for the Storm. And goaltender Scott King was outstanding in the nets, stopping 28 of 29 Birmingham shots. After a day of mending, the Storm continued its tour with an encore performance against the Ice Hawks. The Storm once again broke on top first with an Andy Suey goal to make the score 1-0 Toledo. Up next for the Storm was the newest converted goal scorer, Barry Potomsky, off a great feed from Mark Deasley, made the score 2-0 late in the second. However, as the case has been all season long against Louisville, the Ice Hawks would come back. The number one scorer for Louisville, Sheldon Gorski, was first, lifting it by Scott King to cut the lead to one. Then, still in the second, Kelly ends on the redirection from Mark Sorensen tied it up and set the stage for overtime. After a back-and-forth third and a scoreless overtime session, Louisville would win it in the shootout for their fourth overtime win versus Toledo this season, 4-3. Then on New Year's Eve, the Storm finished their journey in Wheeling, West Virginia for a battle with the first-place T-Birds. And for the third time on the four-game road trip, the Storm would go to overtime. This time, though, the Storm prevailed as John Johnson got the game winner with just two minutes left in overtime, while Scott King once again had an outstanding game, stopping 24 Thunderbird shots. With the re recent turnaround by Toledo, now tied with Dayton for first place with 41 points. Erie, though, right on the tail with 40. Nashville is next with 36, followed by Louisville, Columbus, Birmingham, and Knoxville. Heading out east, the Hampton Road Admirals and the Wheeling Thunderbirds all tied up at 41 points for the top spot. Rowley is next with 39, followed by Greensboro, who has been a hot team of late, then Johnstown, Richmond, and Roanoke. Now let's take a look at our play of the week. This week's play of the week came in Wednesday's game against Louisville. With the storm short staff due to injuries, defenseman Andy Suey was forced to move from defense to forward. And with the pressure on, Suey delivered. With the game still scoreless late in the first period, Suey positioned himself in front of the net to play the rebound and cashed it in, sending it by Kevin Koopman to start the storm outright. Suey's hard work and great shot is our play of the week. 
Still to come, we'll take a peek at a day on the road with the storm. The Storm Report, sponsored by Team Chiropractic, official chiropractor of the Toledo Storm. Ranch Steak and Seafood, you'll never go hungry at ranch. Shortway Travel, official transportation of the storm. And Arnie's at Westgate, Toledo's only sports theater. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Storm Report. I'm Jeff Gibbons, along with Chris McSorley. Tonight on the show, a familiar face from last season, Dan Weeb, who made his return to Toledo this week, will bring everyone up to snuff on the techniques behind a two-on-one breakout. And this week's ice tip, also on the ticket tonight, rookie forward Alex Hicks will be the main man in this week's player profile, as well as axe the coach and the man they call Mac, head coach Chris McSorley. But before all that, let's relive an exciting week of hockey, which saw the storm get rolling last Sunday in Erie. The Storm went into Erie looking for their first win of the season. However, as has been the case against the Panthers all year long, it was close most of the way as Ed Zawatsky notched a red lighter at the 2.30 mark of the third to tie the score at one. But the Storm would retake the lead as up first was Bruce McDonald with his first of two on the night and the eventual game winner to break the deadlock and more importantly, give Toledo the momentum. Rick Judson put the icing on the cake less than two minutes later beating Mike Gilmore on the way to a 4-1 Toledo victory. Friday night, it was a battle for supremacy in the ECHL with the first place Wheeling Thunderbirds making their only appearance to the sports arena. All looked well at the start of the first when Jeff Jablonski off the pretty feed from Rick Judson made the score 1-0 Toledo. In the second with the storm up to zip, Ian Duncan scored his first since coming off the injured list beating Rod Hauk for the third unanswered storm tally of the night. After a Devin Edgerton goal made it 3-1 Toledo, Dan Weeb in his first game back with the storm found the net, making Rod Hauk look silly and the storm look good with another three-goal lead. After a Greg Pahalski score to start the third, the medical value plan's first star of the game, Ian Duncan, answered with the fake of fakes, getting Hauk to commit, then flipping it by an embarrassed Rod Hauk. With the Storm on their way to a 7-2 win late in the third, Alex the Hammer Hicks had the fight of the night as the gloves were dropped and the fists went a-fly in as Hicks pummeled Darren Schwartz, putting an exclamation point on a 7-2 Storm victory. Saturday night brought the Dayton Bombers to town in a battle for supremacy in the West. But much like the night before, the contest began with a couple of Storm scores. First, it was Alex Hicks on the red lighter followed by some dance moves out of MC Hammer's notebook. Then on the power play, Jeff Jablonski notched his third in two nights to give the Storm a 2-0 lead into the second. At the start of the period, it was obvious it would be Toledo's night as just 30 seconds into the second, Rick Judson dug it out of the corner and banged it home past Jeff Stolp for the third goal of the game. The Storm then took a 5-1 lead into the final period when Steve Wilson cashed in on a feed from Derek Donald and Pete Kosowski to cut Toledo's margin to three. But that would be it for Dayton, who were shut out the rest of the way thanks to Mark Richards, who on the evening had 42 saves, leading the Storm on their way to a 6-2 win. Looking at the West, guess who's on their way to maybe another Brabham Cup? Maybe a little early to tell, but Toledo with the best record now in the league, 47 points. Nashville, Dayton, and Erie all bunched up at 44 in second place. Birmingham follows with 41, then Louisville, Columbus, and Knoxville. Heading out east, the Raleigh Icecaps lead the division along with the Wheeling T-Birds, followed by Hampton Roads with 43 points. Greensboro still on a roll lately, 36 points. Then Johnstown, Richmond, and Roanoke. Now let's see who's our recipient in this week's Play of the Week. This week's Play of the Week came in Friday night's game against Wheeling. Late in the third period with the storm in control, Ian Duncan finds himself all alone on the doorstep, drops his shoulder, fakes Rod Houck out of his shorts, then flips it past the stunned goaltender. Duncan's goal broke the game open and sent Wheeling home a 7-2 loser. Ian Duncan's fake is our Play of the Week. 
still on the Squared off with some of the best in the West. Wednesday night, the Columbus Chill made their third appearance to the sports arena and put the storm in an early hole when Frank LaScala ripped one past Scott King for the first score of the game. After a Dennis Skapsky tally made it 2-0 Columbus, the Chief, on the power play, held on just long enough to make it a 2-1 game. Then with just 28 seconds left in the first, Derek Booth tied it up with a shot past Sergei Kramsov to send the clubs into the intermission, tied at a deuce. The second began with a Dan Weeb goal at the 2.03 mark, and then four minutes later, Ricky Judson matched Weeb with his ninth of the season for a 4-2 storm lead. Late in the period, Lescala would cut the margin to one with his second on the night, and the score would stay close until late in the third when Jeff Jablonski unloaded from 50 feet out, zipping it past Kramsoff for the final goal of the game and a 5-3 Toledo win. Friday night, the Nashville Knights were the guests. However, the Storm weren't in the mood to play humble host. As after the Knights got on the board first, the Chief answered with his first of the game to tie the score at one. After another Pahalski tally and a John Johnson score, Jeff Jablonski, giving it his all, hustled down the ice on the breakaway and beat Scott Gordon for Toledo's fourth goal of the game. That would do it for the Storm, though, as Brent Persia in his first game back as a Knight notched his first of the game on the power play to cut the deficit to two, heading into the second. The second period was all Nashville as Trevor Job would score twice and Sepersia once more to give the Knights a lead they would not relinquish. Job would get the hat trick in the third to finish off the scoring for the Knights, but the Chief would match Job for his first hat trick of the season to cut the lead to one. And that's the closest it would get though as Nashville snapped Toledo's 11 game unbeaten streak six to five. Last night, the Erie Panthers made an appearance at the sports arena, and like the night before, it was another offensive slugfest. Just like the Nashville game, the Storm would trail first before Jeff Jablonski and Rick Judson would answer with a couple of scores, beating Mike Milham to send the Storm into the first intermission ahead 2-1. to one. The second would start like a bad dream with the Panthers pouncing for two, one by Freddie Jacks and the other by Glenn Goodall to tie it up at three. About that time, though, the Storm got their wake-up call, striking for three straight goals as Ian Duncan, the Chief, and Rick Judson all at the lamp to give the Storm a comfortable 6-3 lead. After an Ed Zawatsky goal late in the second, the final period would begin with Greg Pahalski's second and Rick Judson's third. For Judson, his first professional hat trick, and for the Storm, an 8-4 advantage. Here he would make it close with a couple of John Berry tallies late in the third, but Toledo would hold on for an 8-6 victory. Taking a look at the West with the win last night, the Storm now with the best league in the e win, best record rather in the ECHL with 51 points. Dayton is next with 50. Nashville then right on the heels along with Erie with 48 points. Then Birmingham, Louisville, Columbus, and Knoxville. Heading out east, look out, the Raleigh Ice Caps and the Wheeling Thunderbirds now in the duel with 50 points apiece to top that division. Hampton Roads is next with 47 followed by Greensboro, Johnstown, Richmond, and Roanoke. Well, it's time once again to see who earned our Play of the Week honors. This week's Play of the Week came in Saturday night's game out at the sports arena. With the Storm clinging to an 8-6 lead over Erie, the Panthers got loose on a 2-on-1 break, only to be denied by Scott King, who reached back across the goal mouth to make the big save. An eerie goal would have cut the lead to one and put the Panthers in a position to tie, but King came up huge and kept the Panthers off the scoreboard. Scott King's clutch play is our play of the week. In hell. Tuesday, the Storm traveled south to Birmingham to take on the improving Bulls. In the first start since rejoining the club from Fort Wayne, Mark Richards went down early in the first period with a pulled groin muscle. However, Scott King came in and didn't miss a beat, making 34 saves on the night. Ian Duncan would get the first tally of the game for the Storm, fooling Chucky Hughes on the misdirection. And from that point on, the Storm wouldn't look back, as Judson, Weeb, and Corvo would all chip in as the Storm finished the night with a 4-2 win. Wednesday, the Storm traveled to Nashville for a rematch with the Knights and came away with a hard-fought 4-3 win. Dan Weeb led the charge for Toledo with a pair of goals, including the game winner. Also pitching in was Jeff Rolacek, who had his first tally as a storm, and Scott King earned the win, stopping 25. 
On Friday in the state capitol, the storm squared out for the Columbus chill, and by the time it was over, the chill would ice the storm in the overtime shootout 4-3. to three. Jeff Rodacek and Dan Weeb each had a red lighter, as would Mark Beasley, who would tie it up late in the third and send it into overtime. But in the shootout, Sean Kane would get the game winner as Jason Fitzsimmons got the win, stopping 19 shots while Scott King took the loss. Saturday night, the new-look Dayton Bombers made a trip to Toledo, but after a scoreless first period, it was an old face that did the damage as Shane Green, while shorthanded, banged it home for the first score of the game. A little later on in the second, it was the Lambertville native, Rick Judson, who on the power play sent it past Rob Lorry to tie it up at one. Heading into the final period with the Bombers up 2-1, to one, Frank Kovacs added to the lead with a fluke goal as Mark Richards thought he had it but didn't, and Kovacs tipped it in. With seven minutes left in the game, the Storm began to play the way they know how as Rick Corvo at the 13-16 mark would slice the margin to one. And then Judson, again hardly a minute later, on a nice move, tied it up and sent the game into overtime. But like the night before, it would go to the shootout, and this time it was Dave Smith with the game winner as nine shootouts later, the jinx continues. Taking a look at the standings, despite the jinx, the Storm will lead the league with 57 points and the West. Dayton is next with 54 in second place. Nashville with 52, then Erie in fourth. Birmingham and Louisville on a roll lately, 47 and 45, then Columbus and Knoxville. Heading out east, the Wheeling T-Birds lead the east with 54 points in the year, but the Raleigh Ice Caps right on their heels with 52. Hampton Roads, who visits the sports arena tonight in third with 49, then Greensboro, Johnstown, Richmond, and Roanoke. Now let's take a look at this week's Play of the Week. This week's Play of the Week came in last night's game against Dayton, with the storm trailing 3-2 to two late in the third period. The man from Lambertville, Rick Judson, had the touch, splitting the defense, going in alone, finds a way past Rob Lorry for a second score of the game, which sent it into overtime. Rick Judson's never-quit attitude and clutch goal is our play of the week. Still to come, Pat. Sunday was the fifth game in six days for the Storm as the defending Rally Cup champion Hampton Roads Admirals were in town. And early on in the first period, Randy Pierce would score first on a disputed goal that didn't appear to cross the line. However, the goal would stand and the Storm would trail. The first period also brought with it several fights, including Dan Weeb and Kurt Kabat, who both would get the gate with a gay misconduct. In the second, Hampton Roads extended their lead to three to nothing on a couple of Victor Gervais tallies before John Johnson would break the goose egg for Toledo with his sixth of the season. The final period would start with the storm trailing four to one when at the halfway point, Ian Duncan on a blast from the point cut the lead to two. But that's the closest the storm would get as Paul Kerpella would score once as would Derek Booth to make the final 5-3 Hampton Roads. Wednesday night in Asheville, the Knights faced a banged up storm squad and came from behind for an 8-5 win. Despite coming into the game with nine skaters and one goaltender, the storm would lead 5-3 late in the second before succumbing to Nashville and Trevor Job, who finished the night with a hat trick and four assists. Five different Toledo skaters would light the lamp as Mark Richards took the loss, making 39 saves, while Scott Gordon would get the win, stopping 35. Friday night began a double dip in Knoxville, and behind a 38-save performance from Mark Richards, Toledo would shut down the Cherokees for zip. The Storm jumped out to a four-goal lead in the first period on a pair of goals from newcomer Larry Olam, and one apiece from Jeff Rodacek and Dan Weeb. For Richards, it was his first professional shutout, while for the Cherokees' Mike Williams, it marked an unhappy return against his former club. On Saturday, it was almost a repeat performance as the Storm would sweep the weekend series with a 5-1 win. Mark Richards once again had an outstanding game, shutting out Knoxville through 56 minutes of the contest before allowing the first Cherokee goal of the weekend. For Toledo, Jeff Rolacek was the offensive star, notching a pair of goals to go along with two assists. Jeff Jablonski, Bruce McDonald, and Derek Booth would also tally a marker for the Storm. With the two wins this weekend, the Storm keep pace with the Dayton Bombers and lead the ECHL with 61 points. Dayton right behind Toledo with 59, followed by Nashville with 58. Erie, Birmingham, Louisville, Columbus, and Knoxville then round out the West. Over in the East, the Wheeling Thunderbirds in position to lead the conference at the All-Star break with 58 points on the year. 
Raleigh is right behind with 57. Hampton Roads with 51, followed by Greensboro, Johnstown, Richmond, and Roanoke. And now let's see which play stood above the rest in this week's Play of the Week. This week's Play of the Week came in last Sunday's game against Hampton Roads. With the storm still hanging close in the third period, Jeff Rolacek set up Ian Duncan at the top of the circle, who promptly blasted it by a stunned Nick Vitusi. Duncan's goal would keep the game within reach and earn our Play of the Week honors. Well, we've gone back into the Storm Report archives to bring you some of this season's greatest hits. Quite a collection of uh, some hits and some good plays, too. Well, still to come on the Storm Report, we'll look at the upcoming week's action. But up next, it's one of the hottest of the Toledo Storm when we return. I'm good. good Our good. guys win again. That's what we like to hear. They're on a roll. Yes. A slide or whatever it is in <laughs> hockey. Storm back from a three-game road trip. Snapped a one-all tie in the second period, icing the Columbus chill. Four to one tonight in the sports arena. Just 37 seconds in uh, the uh, Dan Weeb makes the steal and all by himself drives in for the goal. Storm ahead two to one at the time. Weeb, who played for the Storm last year but returned from Europe uh, the first of this year, knocked in a rebound, making it 3-1. Toledo, his 10th goal in 14 games. Mark Richards ran his record of 5-2-1, and one, making 29 saves. Other Storm's uh, goals by Jablonski and McDonald. Storm stops Columbus four to one. Yeah, well, I mean, that's where the way the game's played. you got to start out on defense and then uh, take care of your own end and play defensive hockey. And once the uh, once you take care of business back there, then the, the goals or the opportunities offensively are going to start to come. The guys around you, and they're playing great right now and clearing out everything for me. I'm getting a good look at everything. So uh, once you get into the, into the swing of things with a new team, you know, things seem to get on a roll. A ruling has been made in the incident last week involving Scott High School basketball coach Ben Williams and Al Peak, a player from start.